Hi guys, this is Mbali and you are watching Journey with Mbali where I basically just detail my story, my life experiences so that it can at least motivate you and help you to what's living a motivated and a purposeful life. In this video, I basically let you guys know that I'm a mom now. That's why I've been away for nine whole months. I've been baking. My husband knocked me up. I know. It was tough that's why i let you guys it was tough but it was also a beautiful pregnancy and hopefully you guys stay tuned and i talk about my birth story as well while i get ready or try to get ready you guys will see and my pregnancy journey love you guys and enjoy but yeah the pregnancy journey part so i found out i was pregnant in march right before the lockdown literally two to three weeks no two weeks before the lockdown i don't even know when the lockdown happened but literally right before the lockdown i found out i was pregnant i was um working and we had started working from home and i just had this headache like it's unlike me to get a like um a headache just randomly um so i was like no i have this headache and i feel so tired and i was working i was working i was working and i was literally waiting for lunchtime so i can take a nap i was like oh my gosh when is my lunch coming and then i took the longest like i slept like a baby like that nap was so good i didn't want to wake up and i still felt tired but i was like you know what let me just continue let me work and then i will rest after working then i the next day i started getting flu symptoms um and i felt a bit fluish and i was like oh my gosh i hope it's not covered um and i had a case at work or we had a case at work where someone had covered and was sitting right next to us so i thought oh my gosh um maybe it is covered but i'm just gonna go to the doctor and see if it is so then i get to my doctor my doctor's like stop exaggerating dr trudy stop exaggerating you do not have covered it's just probably normal flu symptoms but have a seat i will um basically check if anything is abnormal then she's like wait are you pregnant and i'm like uh no because i had been trying or we had been trying for quite some time so i was like i know but let me check and then i will let you know if i am i don't know why i didn't oh yeah i didn't test at the doctor's office because it was still a bit too soon and we're waiting on my period so i was like okay let me go home let me check if my period has started then i will let you know so then i buy pregnancy tests literally not thinking i'm pregnant i was like okay let me just check and then i'll see then I get home and I wanted to test so bad. And my husband was like, just take a break. I mean, calm down. You probably, we're probably not pregnant. Rather, you know, take the test at night where um, I think your, your HCG, if I'm not mistaken, is stronger at night than it is in the mornings or after. No, it's stronger. Mm, you see now, mom brain. So your HCG is stronger in the morning than it is at night so when we came back it was night time and i was like i want to take a test and my husband was like no don't take the test wait a, bit, a little bit longer till the ams in the morning um when your hcg is stronger so i was like okay that's fine i woke up early in the morning when he was asleep i went to the bathroom i took the test um I, I don't know why I bought the expensive ones, but you know, I wanted to know if I'm pregnant or not. So I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited. And then I was like, I'm probably not gonna say not pregnant. And then it says pregnant. And I was like, ah, I screamed so loud. It was 4 a.m. or 6 a.m., but it was really early because I literally had to do it before work started. And I was like, ah. And then my husband, <laughs> hey. My husband literally got out of bed now thinking Wuti there's like a tzotzi or uh, there's someone trying to break into our house. And I was like, ah, what is it? What is it? Who's there? <laughs> now that I think about it, it was upset. I don't know why I didn't laugh, but I just cried. I was like, oh, God remembered me. God gave me a child. And I was like, what? And my husband was like, literally, like before, because we were trying for a while and i would take tests and my husband would have like you know would be excited like oh, oh you're 
pregnant you're pregnant and then would go to the doctors and it would be negative it was uh, false positives and uh, this time i was like ah you know let's first go to the doctors let the doctor confirm it so he didn't want to be excited even though it said pregnant so he was like ah oh, okay you're pregnant and then he was like okay um he just sat down and wanted to simulate everything that was going on and yeah we went to the doctors and the doctor was like hmm, here she is again probably saying she is pregnant but she's really not but i was like okay no it's fine i'm just gonna let like i i was certain that i am pregnant like i believed that pregnant sign when it came up and then the doctor took that little you know those um inexpensive tests that they use um at uh, well health workers use so that they can quickly check so we checked and it said pregnant and i was so happy like i was it, I was like I was in awe of God's goodness and I was like is this really happening and I was just like yeah I am pregnant thank you very much so then we went home the next week that's when your uh, guys the morning sickness was so bad I the first trimester was not great for me I lost five kilograms I was when I got pregnant I don't mind this is a safe zone as if the internet is safe but anyway I don't care I was 80 kilograms I know 80 kilograms before I got pregnant and I went to about 74 kilograms 75 kilograms so it was like 74 next week at 75 then it was like 74 I was all over the place and I I couldn't eat I would only drink liquids I and that time I was actually working guys I like I was taking a lot of sick leave because I was so sick um, I didn't have energy I was not cleaning all I did was literally I was on the couch working after work I would just sleep and then wake up do the same thing for three whole months guys and i was miserable like i was so miserable even though i was excited i was like okay i'm growing this human being but it was the worst time in my pregnancy so <clears throat> look now i'm not even getting ready so um so i'm gonna use this sorry to disturb the story however so then um i have from the pregnancy but it was still there i have a bit of fungi on my neck it got worse during the pregnancy so i've been using this monotech product um it's amprozone it's really really good um it's been treating me well so far um so um i just applied on my neck because those are the problem areas and behind my ears just to make sure so um there i am in my first trimester i'm losing a whole lot of weight even when i was like at the doctor's office um people were like are you really pregnant because i was so thin like are you really pregnant and i'm like yep i am pregnant guys and it's not the best currently right now so my doctor said there's nothing to worry about as long as i'm taking in liquids and i'm not dehydrated the baby will be fine so my second trimester starts oh my second trimester was the best because i could um wear cute outfits for my little bum i could eat again i was still tired um and i would get sick from time to time but i was better than i was in the first trimester i could feel like myself again and i could do some stuff around the house which is great and so um my second trimester comes along everything is going well third trimester um and we could also go for a mini baby moon in the second trimester which was great um i had re like so much fun and i could just relax and kind of realize what was going on and we could enjoy the change that was in or that was coming then i i don't know if you guys can hear the music my husband is on his computer but if you can i do apologize so third trimester comes through we're home keeping safe because of covid then yeah i enjoyed my third trimester it was also fine the only thing was towards the end um in my eighth month i started getting really tired my pelvic area was really sore i couldn't walk i couldn't sit down for long periods of time and my job literally requires you to sit down 
the whole eight hours and work and um, speak with clients and um, make sure that um, everything is, 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 is up to up to scratch. You can go to the bathroom obviously and do normal things but you have to be at your desk because it's a high pressure job and everything literally has a deadline otherwise the clients will be complaining and yeah especially people when you deal with people's money it it's rough so i could not do it anymore i was just painful all the time or i had pain all the time um and so the doctor said no uh, it's best for you mentally it's best for you physically so that you can rest before birth to kind of be on bed's rest and so they put me on bed's rest and I um, obviously was resting I wasn't doing much I was worried because I was not finished with planning for the baby and buying baby clothes so everyone literally had to do everything for me my mother-in-law had to pitch in buy a couple of stuff on our behalf my husband had to go there and, and do this and so yeah i rested and i could kind of you know come into terms with the fact that oh my gosh i'm not living for myself anymore a human being will be dependent on me um and i really enjoyed that time i think that time was so crucial because if i didn't have time to um be with myself time to just reflect and time to um, enjoy my time um i would have felt like yo i have not enjoyed the last bit of me not being a parent because it gets rough there are days where i go on four hours of sleep three hours of sleep so if i didn't have the time i think i would be a little bit not miserable but just feeling like i didn't sleep you know a lot because i slept i would sleep 10 hours i would sleep i enjoyed my sleep during pregnancy so i am i'm just happy that i had that time for rest even though i was upset i was like oh i can't just be a couch potato i can't just you know just not do anything i need to be busy so even though i was you know saying all those things right now now that i look back at it i'm grateful that that happened so um the next thing i do is obviously put on mascara but i don't do much obviously because the baby is currently on my face and you know what i'm just i'm i'm not gonna finish with this kid ready with me i dropped my concealer and then i'm gonna have to press pause here and i only have a couple more minutes till the baby wakes up so i'm just gonna continue I'm gonna put on petroleum jelly instead so <laughs> so then i felt pain this is not the third trimester this is my eighth month i wake up with so much pain on my um pelvic area and i was screaming now you know that when you are pregnant okay before that take like pause on that on on, on that topic for now so I went to the doctors on my eighth, um, my my thirty thirty seventh week appointment. I went to the doctors. It was thirty six weeks, rather thirty six weeks. I went to the doctors. The doctor said my baby was breached, like my baby had not turned. So I was like, how? Because everything was going fine. The baby was due to turn, and I was due to have a natural birth. But now that was not going to happen. So the, the doctor's like, nope. It's probably going to be a C-section. I'm not saying it's going to be a C-section, but it's probably going to be a C-section because usually around this time, they don't turn. So I was like, that was hard. Like, I won't lie because I had mentally prepared for a natural birth. And then I was told that I'm going to have a C-section, of which I fear because it's surgery in the end. Um, and I was just really afraid to go under the knife, but I said, Lord, let your will be done, honestly speaking. However you want this child to come into this world, um, let that be so. Um, in the end, I'm trusting in you to have a safe delivery. So then I go home, I process what's going on. Then a few days later, I call my friend, my two friends, and I'm like, you know what? I instead of a natural birth i am going to have a c-section i am nervous i am scared and they literally did all their best to 
make sure that they're there for me and which I'm very much grateful for and yeah I, I came into terms I accepted one thing guys that you need to know and here's like a motivational snippet one thing you need to know is that if you have a hard time accepting something or you don't accept a situation and you decide to react and not necessarily respond to 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 a certain situation or whatever change that is going on in your life then most probably you will be miserable you will have a hard time um enjoying that season that you are in so i accepted immediately i was like well, not not immediately let me not lie i accepted after i went through it i allowed myself to go through it and then i said in bali now you need to accept the fact that things are not going according to plan you're going to have a c-section and you're going to have to recover from that c-section um it's going to be a painful um after recovery or a painful after deliver post delivery it's going to be a painful post delivery but it is what it is accept it for what it is and move forward you have a healthy baby and accept that you have a healthy baby so or rather be grateful that you have a healthy baby so then the time comes like i said before i had extreme pain i woke up one night i had this extreme pain yo i was screaming for my mom i was like mama like that's not normal especially when you're an adult <laughs> it's not normal to scream for your mom and that for me told me that i need to go to the hospital asap um i'm grateful that i did that i'm grateful that i said mama because it was so random i would never do that uh, like knowing myself i would never i love my mom i adore her but knowing who i am i would never scream out for my mom i'll just like mm, take the pain and go about my day so we go to the hospital and i let them know that i might be in labor i don't know what's going on maybe the baby is turning but i'm so sore and they're like okay how many weeks are you now so that time i was 38 weeks i was like okay i'm 38 weeks but i'm in so much pain they're like okay um is the blood coming out i'm like nope is they they wanted to see if my mucus plug was or my mucus plug had come out and they were like is there any discharge i was like nope so they're like okay then we don't know what's going on and i'm like oh sorry i didn't let you know that i my baby is breech and they're like oh my gosh we need to book you into surgery asap because anything might be going on then they monitor the baby's heartbeat um they monitored the baby's heartbeat and they said okay you'll be going into surgery the next morning but unfortunately because everything is going on so fast we're going to have to put you into the covid unit i know the covid unit and up until we get your covid results then we can um send you up to the normal maternity unit and um take care of you from there unfortunately my results didn't come in time and that COVID test, guys, was insane. Oh my gosh. It literally, it feels like someone is tickling your brain. Because there's, it's, it's like a cotton wool. I don't know what that is. If you're in the healthcare um, sector or if you know what that thing is, please comment down below and let us know. Because wow, <laughs> it was not easy. So that thing goes up your nose and it literally feels like it, it, it touches somewhere next to your brain. Because you get a headache afterwards, which I don't understand. So then we take the COVID test. It didn't come in time. Then they sent me into the surgery um, room, uh, but it was in the COVID section and it was so cold. Yo, oh, it was cold. And it felt like I'm in the army and they're taking me to surgery. Like it felt like, like an army base, you know, <laughs> that's how scary it was being in that COVID unit. So I go there, they slice me up. As they're slicing me up, and my husband wasn't there by the way because his results were not out yet so he took the COVID test with me but then they said oh my gosh your COVID results are not out so you can't come into the surgery so i was like it's fine i was sad obviously but i was like it's fine let's just get the baby out so we go there they slice me up and as they are literally slicing me up i i was so naughty i looked into you know that glass there in the surgery unit if you watch Grey's Anatomy you know what I'm talking about they have a light it's not like a glass but it's a light and that light is reflective um or you can see yourself if that makes any sense so you I literally saw I literally saw everything so I was like everything my guts were out like I was open like they opened me and I could see 
everything and I was like I'm gonna throw up and then the anesthesia is it the anesthesia Anesthes anesthesiologist anesthesiologist thank you the anesthesiologist literally said okay I'm gonna give you something to make sure you don't you don't throw up and that thing worked in two seconds I was like okay I'm fine I can move on then it, it's like when you're doing the c-section you can feel a pressure or pressure um because they're trying to pull out your baby like from your tummy so I don't know if it's from your tummy but it's not below them but right next right before your vagina uh -oh. so yes I said it <laughs> so they pull their baby out and you move around a bit you can't feel any pain because you're numb literally down there but you just can you can feel them moving you because they're trying to pull your baby out so they pull the baby out and my baby cries and I'm like hallelujah thank you Jesus you have done it you have done it yes the baby is crying and my baby had the most like the cutest little laugh like me and I was like it's okay like when when she came out I didn't know what to do I, there were no feelings like people are like it's the best feeling in the world like no I was just like you're so small and I I was yeah I was trying to <laughs> come into terms with everything and all I could say to her was it's okay you're okay it's okay you're okay and they took her away I literally had her for 30 no one minute and I was like in the movies or on YouTube they put your baby there I think she's crying is she crying babe? in the movies they put your baby there and you enjoy them while they you know close you up um, and you, you enjoy your baby while they close you up nope they took the baby immediately away from me because obviously we don't know if I have COVID or not and I understand why they did and oh Thank you to the um, anesthesiologist. Okay, what? Let me Google. We need to learn. Growth mindset. If you can't say something, learn how to say it. Let's see. Anesthesiologist. You see, now I remember it because I am not trying to remember certain details of the birth. Anesthesi, yeah, anesthesiologist, right? So thank you to the anesthesiologist Zanele, who literally, like, guys, she was amazing. She held my hand and she was like, "Are you okay? Are you like, how are you feeling?" This okay, again, <laughs> the camera's just off, but it's the battery, guys. Uh, I just changed the whole battery because like, we can't have a camera switching off and on. No. So then, so I put on the concealer. So I am enjoying the season as much as possible. <laughs> this shot has the laundry. <laughs> Ooh so yeah, that's my baby's nappies. We hang them in the house. So yeah, so my baby uses cloth nappies. Um, if you want a video on that. I don't think you would want a video on that but anyway let's move on so then yeah we've been home we've been enjoying the season um i live in my pjs hello and i have my natural hair on because covid is happening i am not gonna go do my hair during this time to keep my baby safe to keep my family safe to keep myself safe so i you know i have a hard time loving my natural hair and i'll tell you why and I know I'm going to get in trouble for saying this because it's like black queen, love your crown. Absolutely, I am for that. But I have a hard time loving it because of its maintenance, right? Because it takes so much of my time because it's not easy. Because I love convenience. I love literally having to wear a wig or having a protective hairstyle. I would choose that, you know, any day. So... I have a hard time loving it because it's so hard to take care of it but do i love myself in natural hair absolutely and you guys know how i feel about this natural hair journey i have it's been the hardest journey for me but i am i've accepted that this is how i'm gonna uh you know present myself because it's important 
that my baby, my, my daughter sees me with natural hair on. It's important that she knows that our hair is beautiful no matter what because that's definitely something that we cannot argue. Our hair is beautiful 100%. I don't like the fact that it's hard to manage, but the more I learn different ways about it, the more I um, educate myself on how my hair, um, you know, loves to be treated, then definitely I think we will have a better relationship. So yeah, we are enjoying the season and yeah, that's basically how it's been. I live in my PJs like I said, and yeah, that's it from me i'm just gonna put on my mascara mm -mm -mm. i'm gonna put on some this side no lashes obviously because we're looking for something that's easy so that i feel good because no one is trying to not feel good especially during this time my body has changed um i you know, I am kind of same old me, but in a different body. So it's important that I feel confident and I love myself even in this body because it's going to be with me for a couple of months. Oh, bye honey, my husband's about to leave. Bye. So it's important that I feel confident because no one is going to make me feel confident but myself so yeah that is my labor and delivery story i'm just gonna change i don't want you guys to see my laundry it's just weird so um um the mascara keeps going into my eye it's because i'm trying to see through this camera lens and i'm not seeing myself directly in the mirror so <laughs> if if my mascara looks all over the place and it's, it's because I can't see I can't see what's going on um wow <laughs> probably it was probably wiser to do this in my bedroom to film this in my bedroom but my baby's sleeping so I don't want to disturb her mm, I think that looks fine um my eyebrows have not been or shaped so I just leave them as is so yeah thank you guys for joining me on this video I hope you enjoyed okay that's my husband going out I hope you enjoyed this um, story time of my labor and birth um, my labor and delivery story and my pregnancy journey I hope that you guys will subscribe and continue to support this channel thank you for all 85 of you for subscribing <laughs> We are slowly growing, but I definitely would like, obviously, more subscribers because we, this does take time. I, as much as I'm in corporate, as much as I work at 9 to 5, it does take my time. And so I would love to see more subscribers. It's normal. It's human to, for anyone to see, want to see growth. So I am grateful for all of you who share this video. I am grateful for all of you who um, repost it on your social media and ask um, your people your friends your families to you know subscribe and like the video so please comment down below it does support the channel please press that like um, button please subscribe it is for free you're not going to pay anything thank you so so